Hey folks, this is kind of a part two. My, I, I should have known my, there's a certain length of time on my phone where oh, the video just cuts off. And Anyway, so <laughs> sometimes it happens with my videos. Um, but I wanted to add a few more thoughts at least um, about what I was talking earlier about Italian American culture. Uh, maybe more than a few. Um, so, you know, when I was a boy, um, especially before the age of, mm, before the age of 14 or 15 ish, uh, increasingly so when I got, you know, 10, 11, 12, 15, 14. Yeah, but before that time, I was, I had much more, once I understood, let's say the concept of Italy, which, you know, even as a little boy, I, I knew. I knew about Italy. And, oh yeah, Rome, Leaning Tower of Pisa, or whatever. Um, um, <laughs> the Leaning Tower of Pisa, right? I, I knew about Italy. Italy was one of the most recognizable countries for me, and it had a she had like a boot and stuff. And, and um, I can't remember when the first time I, I I learned about the mafia or Catholic Church or you know rosaries or um, well, of course, we all get exposed to, you know, we, we eat spaghetti and pizza. It's almost become an American thing. <laughs> you know, I guess you have American pizza and you have Italian pizza. And, you know, it's different, you know. But, but I, I think I, I, as far as other people, people I knew, I, I, I didn't really, I didn't really... I, and just fully understand the the cultural connections stronger weaker i didn't really it didn't really fully sink in i think until i was probably almost in college but as my late, later teens and i was like oh italian you know somewhat at some level and a lot of it was a lot of my awareness of italian american culture was um, where I was like from the movies, right? But you see, growing up with the way that my family it was and stuff, it wasn't like <laughs> well, on some level we're gonna get. I, I don't. This goes back to religion, and you know, like, okay. So as you guys should probably guess, if you especially been watching more of my videos in the past, my parents did not allow. Not not allowed, right? Um, movies like The Godfather, so so no Godfather, no Goodfellas, nothing like that, right? No no mobster mafia shooting up movies. My parents are very strict about that stuff. No rated R movies, right? That rated no rated R thing. That's a <laughs> it's not absolutely required of members of the church, my church, but it's it's a it's a thing, right? Anyway, uh, so because, of, because so it wasn't those movies. It was definitely Happy Days, or it was Karate Kid, you know, Ralph Macchio. It was great that, you know, right, right off the bat, Karate Kid won. And that was such a, such a big movie when I was 12, 11, 12, right in that ballpark. Uh, 10, 11, 12. Right in the ballpark, 10, 11, 12. Uh, I remember when it wasn't all that old it hadn't been it hadn't been out for all that long when I first saw it. I remember how um, how intense it was, and how in, into the movie I was. I was riveted. I was riveted. It was so good. It was so good. You know, and um, I just it's just awesome. But even at the very beginning, right when you see um, Ralph Macho's character Daniel Russo when he's leaving Newark and you see automatically the scene where he's growing up, whether or not he's heard, you've seen some of the Rocky movies or whatever. You're like, Oh my gosh, I I just immediately knew, I just immediately knew what people were like there and what it's just the way it was, you know, the, the New Jersey tenements and just the way the kids were. I was like, and it wasn't, see in New York, New, Newark, New Jersey, isn't all that, 
all that much different from growing up in Washington State. But it's different, right? It's definitely more, it, you know, I, I sensed it. it was like, oh, this is definitely more the heart of Italian-American culture, right? Yeah, I, I felt it, right? It's the same deal if you go to, like, the Harlem. Like, like Harlem, New York, it's like, oh, this is definitely Afro-American culture, but this is Harlem, right? This is, like, the birthplace of jazz, right? You get the idea of what I'm saying. So, but I felt that on some level. On some level, I felt that when I was a little boy. And so, but you have those kind of windows, windows into at least East Coast Italian-American culture when you're a boy. And, and, and so movies for me were a huge thing, a huge, huge thing. And um, so Ralph Macchio, uh, he, he did more for me than maybe he realized in terms of, oh, okay. Because the, the, the boys, the boys, the girls too, but the boys I knew that were my age, or thereabouts, some of them were brother's age, a little bit younger, you know, whether or not they were Italian or not, or Italian-American or whatever, I just, it kind of completely flew over my head, right? I kind of had a vague idea. Oh, okay. I really did, had no idea. So, But as I got older, I was like, oh, I see now. I see, right? And that's often how it is, right? But, but as a little boy, you don't really know which last names are Italian or German or... You know, they don't always stand out to you. You just you're absorbing everything. You're you're still making sense of everything, and and a lot of people in general don't necessarily think that all that much about nationality anyway. Everybody's a little different, I suppose. But um, in addition to Karate Kid, because you know Karate itself, oh, that's more like Asia, right? Okinawa, Japan, and so on and so forth, China. Yeah, sure, sure. With those movies, you know. Definitely Asia, but but because Ralph Ralph Macchio was the main character, because the Italian American dimension to his character, culture from New Jersey was was definitely there. You're like you're able to kind of sink into that uh, culture a little bit more, able to understand it. Uh, and, and so movies were so big. Again, movies were so big that way. Um, there are other movies like that. They're kind of like that. Um, there was a movie that uh, I can't remember what what the name of it was but um, <laughs> sorry folks but there, there were definitely I'm going to put it this way I'll put it this way there were definitely things going on Movies in there were other movies in the eighties and nineties and TV shows that involved if it wasn't Italian American actors or actresses, then it was like an East Coast thing, like New York, New Jersey, or it was Jew the Jewish American culture, which is sometimes there's always that interesting crossover between. Jewish uh, East East Coast Jewish culture and Italian American, you know, because again, New York New York is kind of the the hub of all that, right? Philadelphia, New Jersey, New York, and so you know, I remember um, well, I don't know, um, oh, is it Tootsie <laughs> and? I don't know that movie about that girl who was uh, I can't I don't know I don't I can't remember offhand if she was Italian per se, but um, anyway when Home Alone came along of course now we're talking this was this was before so this for me this was before I even before I saw Goodfellas or most any other movie with Joe Pesci for instance. Um, and by the way, I, I was like, oh yeah, Tootsie had the song from Stephen Bishop, It Might Be You. And, but I only I honestly saw Tootsie like once. And it just wasn't that remarkable of a movie. But the, I guess because she was an orphan or she's looking for parents, it was kind of had this emotion, emotional side to it. And then, of course, you know, Lady and the Tramp, uh, Disney's Lady and the Tramp, that, you know, the, the restaurant that 
<laughs> the dogs go to, and it's very romantic, right? And then there's, anyway, all these things, right, that are just there, like in the movie Big with Tom Hanks. And they go to the Italian restaurant and they're singing and stuff. And so we often think of, of, you know, spaghetti, pizza, food. Food often comes to mind, you know, with Italian, Italian American culture, Olive Garden stuff. And it's not quite as, oh, I don't know. It's all, see, it's all, it's all in the back of my mind. It's all just coming and coming and coming in little bits here and there. And when I was, again, when I was younger, I'm sorry, I'm jumping all over the place here, folks. But when I was younger, again, it wasn't necessarily the people I knew. I, I didn't see, I didn't, I, never, I didn't, I tended to not see people that were my age as Italian or Italian American. Although I, I suppose I could if they said, oh yeah, I'm Italian. I'm like, oh, okay. But it was always more of a, in the movies or food or also talking about the homeland, Italy, you know. It's always more like kind of abstract thing. And then as I've gotten older, I've I've seen, you know, I see the connections more. With, I, certainly by the time I was at Central Washington, or by the time I was in my uh, not quite very early 20s, but early year 20s, I was just like, yeah, yeah, I knew, I knew what was going on. But um, I guess, let's see here. What was I going to say earlier about some other stuff, other movies and things? Well, there was that um, Mad About You TV show from the 90s. And uh, a guy, I think the main guy there was, there's Helen Hunt, but the main guy was, I think, Jewish. He was the same guy that was in, uh, he has a kind of the, <laughs> it's okay, I can't remember his name. I, if someone mentioned his name, I was like, oh yeah, that guy, I know, but he's Jewish, but Anyway, but um, again, kind of an East Coast culture, New York culture, uh, very recognizable that way. And I always thought that Helen Hunt was, by the way, was okay, but she was a little bit, she could be a little bit snappy, a little bit intense. But you, we always kind of get these inferences from people on movies, you know, we try to see their, some people are more interested in, in actors and actresses that way than others, of course, but. Yeah, Helen's pretty intense to me, but she has has a nicer side to her too. Anyway, aside from all that, um, I was getting, talking about um, Home Alone, Home Alone movies, and Joe Pesci. Well, so I I hadn't seen, I honestly had not seen Goodfellas, Godfather, or anything else. Like I guess there's that. Well, I hadn't seen anything with Joe Pesci. I don't think, I don't think, I could be wrong here. But I think Home Alone was the first time I'd seen him in a movie. Which, you know, the weird thing about Joe Pesci is I, I'm i fairly certain, I could be wrong, but I'm fairly certain that I had seen, I had seen him in other movies before. You know, I don't know. Maybe in my own mind it's just played tricks on me. Because he has that iconic temper, right? <sighs> the Snickers bar stuff, right? I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe it was the case. The more I think about it, maybe it was the case that Home Alone was the first movie I saw with Joe Pesci. But because of the way he was, with his character, uh, not Marv, but it was Harry, right? Um, because the way he was, I kept feeling, this was 1990, I was 12 years old, I kept thinking, you know, something about this character, Harry, it seems like, it seems like there are people, I had this, this, this suspicion that <laughs> he's kind of playing a little bit of a part that he had played in earlier movies. Or, or, or that there was something going on here that I wasn't completely aware of. Um, I, you know, because aside from Homo itself and all the characters, and Marv was this doofus, and Harry was this short, shorter guy who was kind of the brains of the operation of the, you know, the, the wet bandits. <laughs> you no, know, it was something about 
Pesci's character the way he played him, I was just like, this guy is kind of scary, right? Where he's like, mm, he's, he's, yeah. And yes, of course, lo and behold, I was like, oh, yeah. I mean, I, you know, um, I, I kind of sensed that Joe Pesci was a more experienced actor. And um, so, yeah. Oh, good fellas, of course. Wow. But, you know, there's other things that he had done. He has done that I'm probably not, still not even thinking of. Um, but I guess, you know, this, again, from Goodfellas, it's like, uh, uh, that one iconic scene, you know, he's given, um, Ray Liotta's character, you know, a bad time, kind of, you know, it's just like, am I, am I do I amuse you like a clown, <laughs> you know, and so he's, all of a sudden, he's like, He's breaking his balls, right? But it's like he's... <laughs> yeah. When I first saw Goodfellas, and I'd also kind of been familiar somewhat with that, you know, kind of humor where you act serious, and then you say, I'm just teasing you. Right, I, you know. Um, and the funny thing is that there's a... There's a I picked up on... On some level, I guess there's that one guy who was a member of either Backstreet Boys or NSYNC that was Greek. But he said that there was a similar kind of... This was from the Big Fat Greek Wedding, you know, movie. There was that similar kind of humor where, you know, you had that mock seriousness. And they, I'm just kidding. So I kind of picked up on that similarity and um, there. But but that's that's the one scene. And it's just that, you know kind of thing again kind of like you know how Robert De Niro always has that slight grimace slight like smirk or smile it's like always halfway in between you wonder if with, with Pesci because he's so good at being so serious when he's joking you know but he, he you know those kinds of jokes are, you, you know you know because he does such a good job with that scene um, maybe it's just one of those things that kind of almost defined him. <laughs> so, so, um, anyway, I'm kind of maybe even repeating myself a, bit too, a little bit too much here, but it's kind of like when you see Harry's character in Home Alone, even, even as a boy, even having not seen all these other Joe Pesci movies, but when you see him get really upset or intense, so it's almost like a comic. There's a comic side to it. And anyway, I think you guys are trying to, on some, there's, there's a lot of different levels to layers to what I'm talking about here. And, um, anyway, I was, I was getting some of this bit by bit, by bit, you know, now when I first saw home alone, for instance, I was like, Oh, he looks kind of Italian. Joe Pesci. Hmm. This is New York city or Chicago, but, the Home Alone 2 is in New York, of course. But he, the way he talks, the way Pesci talks, it's like, oh, it sounds kind of New Jersey. Yeah, seeing that a little bit. So let's jump to another, another actor here a little bit. So, of course, um, I've talked about Pesci enough here, but, but I was getting these little things here and there. I, you know, I can't always, it's hard to sum up everything that I've seen. There's probably some things, again, that I'm not thinking of, but... Um, Al Pacino, you know, again, his big thing was being Michael Corleone in the, God, in the, the Godfather, right? Um, really, it was a big breakout movie. And I've seen the Jack Nicholson interview where, you know, thanks Nicholson, right? Um, Al Pacino got the role. And that was a big, again, I, I always admire Nicholson for that, you know, that move. But um, again, you know, Pacino has been what, the devil's advocate. He's been in other movies I've seen him in. But yeah, The Godfather just really stands out. Um, and Scarface and stuff, right? So, so Al Pacino, Pesci's got the famous temper. And you, can, you can't tell if he's joking or being serious sometimes because he's used that temper for comedic, comedic effect, you know. But you can kind of tell because he, he smiles a little bit if he's joking. He doesn't, doesn't, doesn't want to make you feel too uncomfortable. For a bit, but 
if any of you guys, I think you guys have probably seen Goodfellas, by the way. If you haven't seen Goodfellas, do yourself a favor and just watch it. <laughs> okay. Oh, man. Seriously. That's good. Um, anyway. But um, Al Pacino is really dramatic with his eyes. I just, I, I've known so few other actors that can do what he's done in terms of those expressions. Um, and, you know, I've mentioned this before in other videos on some level. If somebody has, in my opinion, if someone has blue eyes or um, green eyes, you can kind of see that the emotion that that person is feeling, the thoughts, can often come through those that eye color uh, more directly. Or it, it, can, it, can, it can be very intense, right? Very intense gaze. And the funny thing is, if you're talking about darker eye colors, like in Al Pacino's case, you know, dark brown, um, t to me, the emotion that he's feeling, or, you know, whatever it is, isn't always as apparent. It's not always as, oh my gosh, well, you know, uh, clearly this way, right? You can see facial expressions, but if the facial expressions are a little bit harder to read, like for instance, when Pacino is about to shoot the police officer and the, the Turk, you know, in the, in the um, Godfather, right with that scene where right before he's about to do that, you can kind of see what's happening, but he's so hidden about it. He's so, uh, and they, they don't see it coming, right? And a lot of that's just, you can tell that he's feeling some serious, you know, this is about to go down, right? He's just, he's stealing himself for it. And he finally does it, you know. He, anyway. But, but what I'm trying to say is Pacino's, even something as, um, I almost seems silly, but it's almost something as, uh, um, something like someone's eye color, right, can aid in kind of masking your emotion, one's emotion, I think, a little bit. Because if you take, in my opinion, you take that, you take someone with blue eyes. Hey, let's take Frank Sinatra, why not? Let's keep it Italian. If Frank Sinatra were to play that same role, uh, you know, I mean, like, anybody with blue eyes or green eyes, Oh, hazel to a lesser extent, but blue green eyes, man. They're gonna someone's gonna catch on to that intensity a little quicker, I think. The other people see it differently. I I see that as being one of the one of the things about that that scene that makes it really work. Anyway, so now I'm talking more about you know, Italian American actors and stuff, and you know, I'll play it there, and you know, I'd seen. I guess you, you know, I had seen Robert De Niro a bit more, and uh, I don't know other movies. I'm not sure which ones I'm thinking of here, right off the bat. Um, yeah, certainly Meet the Fockers, but that was a little bit later in two thousands, sometime. There's some, there's some things I saw with De Niro before then. Um, anyway. Um, and of course, I know De Niro's got all kinds of stuff, not just Italian, but French and German and da, 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 Irish, right? A lot of Irish. Um, getting back to my boyhood years, at least a little bit with some of these things. Um, I think I was always a little bit more apt to not talk about certain subjects as much because maybe I was still formulating how I th what I thought about certain things. And if you, if I knew that somebody had Italian ancestry, I, I would be, I've been petrified to say, Oh, so do you like pizza or do you like spaghetti? I would, I, I, I never wanted to ask those questions because I do on some level. Oh, I'm kind of like, um, kind of, putting them in a classification, right? On some level, on some level, I tend to do this anyway. <laughs> I've always tended to do this, having, you know, mild autism, autism well, high-functioning autism, you know, 
masters. I, I tended to kind of, kind of do this already anyway, but as a boy, I kind of avoided doing that, saying those things. And I think it probably was a good thing, but a lot of times it was probably not needed. That um, nervousness or that um, I'm going to just hold back on saying this train of thought. A lot of times, yeah, it wasn't needed. A lot of folks that are Italian-American are very open, very cheerful, friendly about culture. And again, it, it's like there are a lot of people that are just American. As you know, as you know just, just American. They're Italian only and last name only for the most part. They don't have as much connection with whatever culture that their ancestors came from. Other folks are very different. They're very connected with you know, all that stuff. And so I guess it's like, you know, as a boy, I knowing different people I knew, I kind of sensed who was more connected with, you know, their parent culture or not. I kind of could see that, but I had to kind of maybe go to the my friend's house, meet the parents, you know. Um... Yeah, I don't know. And, and the other thing, too, is, as you guys probably, this goes without saying, with Italian-American culture, um, as I kind of hinted at in the first video, oh, there's just no polite way of saying this, but it's, I don't know, it's kind of like, well, if you're white, if you're Caucasian in the United States, you're probably, it's very likely that you're probably of general British Isles, like Irish, Scottish, Welsh, English descent, or German, so, so British Isles, or German, or, you know, it could be Scandinavian, or Polish, or French, or whatever, or Italian, or, you know, other countries, Dutch, or Swiss, or uh, all over the map, if you're, a, you know, if you're European American, but uh, but yeah, you can have a lot of Scottish and Irish and German and stuff. But you could be if you're Italian, if you're Italian ancestry. Um, if you, especially from northern, more from northern Italy, your ancestry, you can be almost, be basically just like almost like another white guy, right? And of course, yes, this is the, if you're Sicilian or you're Southern Italian, you might stand out a bit more because you're going to be more. Maybe darker haired, more olive tone complexion some of the time. Some of the time. So you go, oh, you're white, but you're, you know. So a lot of times Italians will see themselves as being a little different. This is, I know, this is a big subject for a lot of folks. Um, growing up, I I knew more the the kids that were just Italian. I, I don't know if I knew too many, if I did know any Sicilians. It wasn't like they were obviously Sicilian or they weren't like, you know, black hair and olive tone. They were like, you know, darker, like dark brown or black hair, but still white. And it's always a question of um, how someone sees themselves or what culture someone identifies with. And um, if you're white, then you're, I guess, white. You see yourself as white. Um, but if you're um, more Southern Italian, you might identify just more with this Southern Italian, Sicilian, Italian American kind of thing. And so it's always been the case that you could either be just really kind of, oh, I'm just like everybody else, you know, kind of thing, especially if you don't have a New York accent or you don't, whatever. But, or you could be identify more with the Italian American culture um, on some level. And uh, this, there's so many other things to, to say about this subject, I think, but it's it's just something I've picked up on over time on some level. And again, I've, I've never wanted to make someone feel self-conscious about anything. I've always been very careful about what I've said. And by and large, everybody I've talked to, um, time American wise, uh, they've generally been really open really friendly and really just oh this is kind of how, who I identify with or this is my element right um, 
And so it's never been any mystery to me. So that's been a really nice thing. You know, so many times in life, you're wondering how to approach someone or how to say different things, just get to know them better, especially folks like myself. You know, So it's so nice. It's so, ah, it takes a load off your back to just have, know some folks that tend to not be, or tend to be more um, cheerful and open about these things. I would hope that other people, uh, other sorts of people are more like this, you know. Uh, it's a good way of being. It, it, this is a generalization, of course, but in my experience, this has been more the case with um, Italian-American culture. So I know I didn't talk about all these other guys, uh, Italian-American actors or actresses and musicians, you know, and Frankie Valli and I know the connection between Joe Pesci and Frankie Valli somewhat to the force, you know. Um, there's probably many other things that I didn't mention that I could mention. But, um, but you know, this subject goes pretty deep for me. It's, it's, um, I've often, I guess in summary, I've, I've often wanted to, I myself have wanted to identify with, somewhat with the Italian, Italian-Americans more. And um, it's, it's I maybe have talked about this with I don't know if I've mentioned this with Eastern Europe and Pol Poles or Polish folks and Russians. It's a similar deal also with Eastern Europe. But you know, it's like I feel I feel very much like like them. I feel like Southern Ita Southern Europeans, Southern Italians, Spaniards, and Greeks. I feel very similar to them. Um, and of course, Eastern Europeans same deal um but at the same time a little bit different and like oh anyway <laughs> hopefully you guys are getting what i'm saying uh, i think i've yeah i've done i just I've, I've done pretty i've done justice to this subtopic i think but anyway you guys leave me thoughts and comments below i'll catch you guys later take care bye